Sometimes you have no choice but to have a multi-way mind. I guess when I think about the branching and uh, the coming back together, the merging of different branches of history, different threads of history, I, I find it easy to imagine that when we're talking about very small parts of the hypergraph that are just, you know, a all gets applied here, then there, and it doesn't really matter whether it's applied in the opposite order. It comes back together. It's the same hypergraph afterwards. But you've talked about like those kind of rare Schrodinger's cat-like events in quantum mechanics where measurements kind of, you know, aren't so much aggregating threads of history to get an average, but they're tipping one way or another to the cat being alive or the cat being dead. I can imagine neurons coming to some consensus, but what if there's such a huge divergence in the threads of history that if you converge one way, you're going to get a completely different result than if you converge the other way? Yeah, it'd be a strange thing to feel. I mean, most <laughs> of us, you know, it's like, can you hold in your mind two different threads of experience? And most of the time, we don't do that. Um, you know, if we were, uh, for example, our view of quantum computers would be very different if we could do that. We could potentially, th th you know, hold in our minds all the different threads of history. If somebody said, well, what's the answer? We'd say, well, there isn't an answer. It's, yeah. We got all these different threads of history. By the way, I mean, it just as a, uh, this, this understanding of this, it's sort of an interesting way that this develops. You know, this understanding of this as a matter of basic science is turning into a way of thinking about distributed computing. And you'll see constructs in Wolfram language that come directly from this idea of kind of this multiple threads of history thing that end up being useful objects to say, well, let's actually hold that thing where we have these multiple threads of history, so to speak, as a, as a thing that we can manipulate and get another thing with multiple threads of history and only at the end, so to speak, say, okay, let's resolve that to a single answer or whatever. There's a, it becomes a thing that you can think in terms of, it's, uh, which is sort of interesting. And perhaps we then get some intuition for sort of how to think in this way where we sort of have a, a multi-way mind, so to speak. Now it's, you know, sometimes you have no choice but to have a multi-way mind. For example, if you're an, an event horizon, or more accurately, at sort of an entanglement horizon around a black hole, you can end up with a situation where sort of you have a mind that's there and you're trying to decide, did this, did, did you follow one branch or did you follow another branch? And what we suspect happens is that sort of at the entanglement horizon, you sort of can't form a classical thought. You can't resolve which branch you actually followed. In other words, it's, it's, it's kind of like at the event horizon of a black hole, you're kind of in a situation where sort of you have these virtual particles and maybe one falls into the black hole, the other one doesn't. This is a case where, where you've got something where, again, there's more that should be worked out about this, but the, the rough intuition is you're at a point where you're, I should say for a black hole, one feature of a black hole is viewed from the outside nothing ever actually falls in. It just freezes at the surface. That's the, that's the way that you know, time and space work near a black hole. And so you're kind of, you're kind of it, it, uh, uh, that's the observation from the outside is that time kind of freezes there and the, the, the things freeze there. And so similarly, in the case of uh, the entanglement horizon, the idea is you can't form a classical thought. The, the, the observer, the, the mind that's there is kind of stuck in this case where time is, is extended to the point where the, the, this usual knitting together of threads of history just doesn't work. So there will be no classical conclusion about what happened. So if you ask, you know, did that particle fall into the black hole? That mind will be stuck saying, I don't know. I mean, you won't be able to communicate with it in that way, but, but yeah. it's, it's, um, you know, it's not, it hasn't been able to form a classical thought, so to speak. Now, most of the time, we do succeed in forming classical thoughts. We do succeed in doing a thing that seems to be important to us, which is coming out with that single thread of experience. You know, it's, it's an interesting question as we think about sort of more collective consciousnesses of a whole society or something as opposed to an individual human. You know, we society, for better or worse, occasionally sort of makes decisions to go in one direction or another. Uh, as a result of sort of aggregating these individual sort of uh, the, the individual of influences of, of, of separate consciousnesses, so to speak. And how that sort of 
how that kind of um, formation of a decision works and how that compares with the sort of formation of a decision at the level of neurons, these are interesting questions. And I think we get to, to explore these a bit more because we have now, well, in, with modern AI and so on, we have kind of a good, uh, a good, good kind of um, uh, model system in which we can see many of these phenomena, but where we can much more readily open it up and see the individual uh, sort of elements than we can with actual brains and so on.